you've always got to understand what something is called and why it is called that. What's a model? A model. When you hear the word model, what do you think of? Uh, it's like a person, right, who has incredible body proportions and gets pray, paid to walk up and down and look amazing all day, right? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm told it's a really depressing life, but that aside, I'm never going to be models, so it's something I don't have to worry about. The idea is I need to look at how something is going to function in the real world, right? <laughs> Which is ironic because models are not like the real world at all, but you see clothes on a rack, and you're like, I don't know what that's going to look like when someone actually wears it, so you use a model, right? Now, because I'm a bit more of a nerd and I have friends who do this kind of thing, when I think of a model, I think of this. Um, this is actually um, Sydney. Maybe this will be a little bit easier if I do this. This is Sydney. That's circular key down there. You can just make out center point. I was trying to find a high resolution one, but I couldn't. This is Sydney. It's a model. It's a scale model of the entire CBD. And it's used by civil engineers. You can in fact see the table that it's on, like that's how big it extends, right? And the reason civil engineers use this is, um, there's lots of types of engineers, like aeronautical, chemical, software, blah, blah, blah. Does anyone know what civil engineers do? Buildings. They are like architects, basically. They're kind of like the nitty gritty stuff for what architects design. Now, it's really important for them to have something like this to work with, because these buildings, very, very tall. When you build very, very tall things, there are issues that kind of crop up that don't, that aren't really a worry when you've got very short buildings. Namely, the wind, right? So we're here on the harbour, right? We're around in the ocean, the sea is like over here. All of this incredible wind is coming into the city and it's affecting these buildings, right? I don't know if you ever looked at Centerpoint and thought about how ridiculous that thing looks, right? Like, can you imagine if you had like a really tall object and you tried to rest on your hand, in fact, I'm gonna try it just to demonstrate how possible this is, right? Take a tall object and just try and rest it on your hand so that it stays still. Now, it is incredibly difficult. I know you might think, oh, it's just because Sir's uncurved, right? In a minute, I'll get you guys to have a go at this yourself and you'll discover how difficult it is to take a tall object and have it stay stable. And then you look at something like that. How does it do that? Answer, a lot of engineering and a lot of testing with the wind. Now, here's the problem. As an engineer, um, you cannot spend billions, trillions of dollars making your building and then kind of on opening day just crossing your fingers and hoping it does not blow over, okay? You need to test on a model beforehand, right? So this is actually, this particular model, it's in a wind tunnel and they literally siphon wind through here and they test out a building. Let's, oh, let's put this here. What if we did an 80 story and we did it over there? Would that work? Would it be better if it was here? What's the maximum height I can build to, okay? So modeling is about saying, take something that's kind of like the real world. Yeah, this time you can go that way, as I've started. Um, take something which is not exactly the real world, but it gives you a good enough idea of how the real world functions that you can draw some conclusions off it. You can say, yeah, it's all right. I'm pretty confident we can do center point and it's not gonna fall in a heap, okay? So this is what models are. Maybe you wanna write that down with me, right? Uh, mathematical models, because that's what we're looking at, Mathematical models are, I well, guess the way I would say it is, they're approximations of the real world. Approximations of the real world. No one thinks, oh, this is exactly how the, how the Sydney CBD is going to function, right? Like this thing is, I don't know what the scale is, it's, it's several hundred to one, so it's much, much smaller, otherwise it would be Im impractical. So all it is is an approximation of the real world. But if your approximation is good enough, you can draw conclusions from it, right? There are approximations of the real world that we can draw practical conclusions from. For example, where can you build your building? How tall is it going to be? Now, where do you think the linear comes in? What do you think that's about? Yep, sorry it's messy, I'm in a hurry. Uh, mathematical models are approximations of the real world that we can draw practical conclusions from. The linear comes in when you have a look at something like this. Um, let's go to... <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna work with this right now. This is a linear model, this thing here, of printing costs versus number of books that are produced by a certain publisher, okay? It's a linear model because it's a straight line, okay? It's not the real world. 
but it's close enough that we can draw some decisions on it, uh, make some decisions on it, and draw some conclusions from it. Yes? Is this accurate? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I'm, when you say accurate, I think it's made up. I think it's made up. But it's, you know, it's not like ridiculous. I think it's, I guess it depends on how many books you make. Like. It is a simplified version. I will say, in fact, in reality, when the number of books increases, uh, we talk about things called economies of scale. So you guys know, if you buy in bulk, you can buy for less, right? Like each individual unit will cost less. So in fact, a more realistic graph might not be exactly straight, but it's close enough to straight that I can still use this to draw some conclusions from, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now, okay? So have a look at it. This graph models printing costs, identify the dependent and independent variables. Okay, this is the easy part. What are the two things being compared and which one is which? Any takers? Okay. Okay, now I'll give you a bit of a clue, right? Because <laughs> it's kind of 50-50, right? Which axis do we usually use for the independent variable, the one that we change? We tend to use X, we tend to read it that way and say, okay, if you give me a number of books, I'll give you the cost, okay? Generally speaking. So I'm actually gonna call this one the independent and this one the dependent, okay? So maybe for part A, you wanna write down, generally speaking, we would say the number of books that's what the cost depends on, right? It's like, oh, if you wanna do 400 books, this is how much it'll cost you, as opposed to the other way around, even though we'll pose both those questions. So, par B, this is the normal way of phrasing it, find the cost of printing 500 books. Okay, what are we going to do? Have a look at your horizontal axis, which is the book axis, right? There's 500 right there, okay? So I'm going to read that up. It looks to me, if I go all the way up along this grid line, I'm gonna end there. You happy with that? That's 500 books. Now you read across to here. Look carefully. What would you say that's equal to? It looks like it's just above. Yeah, it looks like it's just above this line. Do you agree with that? Do you see it's just above that, that line reading across? So my question is, well, what does that line, or what does that point on the axis? Yeah, it's 4,750, right? Because it's halfway between 4,500 and 5,000. So in fact, what I'm gonna write is, here's my example. You guys have already written down A. For part B, I would say, it's just above 4,750, right? Just above. Now, this is, and um, Gary mentioned this before, it's like, well, it's a bit hard to read. It's not exactly on. But we can make, some, and it's okay, it's an approximation. So I'm gonna pick a number that's just above, it's not at 5,000. I'm gonna say uh, 4,800. Okay. Now we will talk in a future topic about what we call greatest possible error, um, the percentage error, the limits of accuracy that are on a graph. If we're in the right ballpark, I think we're okay. If you wrote 4,750, I don't think that would be all right. Why not? Because it is clearly not on the line. I don't know how much it's not on the line, but it can't be on the line. If I wrote like 5,000, also wrong. You've gone way too far, but I'm in the reasonable range. Okay. So there's a, there's a bit of error that's acceptable in there. 